because I remember playing Sonic 1 first time. I was run, running along happy as Barry, and uh, I got to the spring yard zone, and then it was, I, think, I thought it was like the best game ever, and then suddenly I just got crushed flat by a big green box. We're talking about sex today, mate. Sex? <laughs> Um, so my mind immediately goes to the likes of uh, Kistus Trepper from Final Fantasy VIII and Shionazuki and Xenosaga. Uh, I, I just have a little thing for lasses with glasses. But I'd rather, it's more interesting to reference something that actually happened in my personal life. I won't mention any names, I won't, don't embarrass anyone. But when I was at university at the times when I wasn't wasting it playing World of Warcraft, I met this uh, girl, or a woman rather, and it turned out we had a shared interest in LucasArts adventure games and we also had a shared interest in being social outcasts. So obviously we had an immediate connection. On one occasion we had this, uh, this, this great evening where we had a race to see who could complete Monkey Island 2 quickest. I was playing on the PC and she was playing on the 11 disc Amiga 1200 version <laughs> which I'd <laughs> extracted from my loft and all the discs just and I gave her a second disk drive, to be fair, to give her a bit of a, you know, a bit of a bit of an, an advantage. And it was all going along very swimmingly until I think she got to the second act, and then the game performed an unexpected, like, guru meditation error, and it crashed. And that was pretty much a metaphor for our relationship. <laughs> um, it ended there, and I've never met anyone who likes LucasArts Adventures since. Well, that's a lie. Yeah, yeah, so, except us, obviously. Any of yous? <laughs> want to go? You've been very, yeah, I was going to say, you've been very shy about it. <laughs> I'll let you thumb my hard drive any day, mate. Okay, thank you. <laughs> First video game crush is actually like quite hard to pin down because I know what it is, but I've had many over my life. Uh, so like Jade from Beyond Good and Evil, fantastically written character, really well, and like you fall in love with her. But I also have like a really weird crush on GLaDOS. I think it's because in my current relationship I'm used to an emotionally distant woman telling me what to do. So I think that that actually ticks a few boxes with me there. Nice voice, though. She does have a nice voice, yeah. Um, but I'd have to say that my actual first ever crush, it's got to be Shao Kahn. What? Oh. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I would, I would, I would let him smash me with his hammer all the time. Which, which ball peen, thing? you know what I'm saying? Ball peen hammer with his tiny little like loincloth and hot pants, <laughs> and then it was just the little skull mask. It was like metal up top, leather daddy down below. I was, I was a big fan of that. I just saw him and I was just like, huh? I wonder what it'd be like to be pasted by that man. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, just a, a, a nice, sweet, short relationship it would be with him, going to the outer worlds and just... It would not, man. I, it would be viscera it's everywhere. Solid. And then it would begin. Also, shout out to Pavati for uh, Outer Worlds. She is literally, yes. she is number one at the moment. Well, I can't remember my exact first one because when I was five, I was a bit of a, a dirty stopout. So I've got three. My first is Nina w Williams from Tekken 3. I played that game to death. And I used to have a wee relationship with Nina because, you know, really enjoyed playing as her. Also really enjoyed getting the crap kicked out of me by her. Don't know what that's about. My second one is, I can't even remember her name, but the Lady Kangaroo from Spyro 3, uh, right? Sheila. Yeah. Sheila. Sheila the Kangaroo. Of course it's Sheila the Kangaroo, isn't it, right? I, I thought about this when I was replaying through Spyro the Remastered Collection. Because in that game, she has, you know, lovely, wispy hair. She's, uh, you know, a lady. But I went back. <laughs> Because that, you know, rekindled the old, uh, the, old, uh, the old feelings, the old flame. And I went back to, you know, out of curiosity to see what she looked like in the original game. She's just a blocky kangaroo. There's, there's nothing there, no physical attraction. So to me, that's better because it means it's a deep spiritual connection to this Sheila. Yeah, Ash, I know what your um, pick is going to be, so don't you complain about the animal picks at this moment, which takes me into number three. Gex the Gecko, but only <laughs> when he's wearing a tuxedo. And I can't remember if he smokes, but he in my head, he certainly has a little a little cigarette in his mouth because, you know, he might, uh, you know, he probably calls people other lady lizards or gecko. Uh, probably, like, calls them dams, you know, I realize he's probably, like, he's the Humphrey Bogart of video games, and I love Casablanca, and therefore I love Gex the Gecko, and I don't know whether I want to be him or get done by him is the thing. Maybe is, both. Is it because it's Leslie Phillips doing the voiceover? That could be it, you know. I didn't realise that until you told me before yeah. uh, filming, but that could be the 
the USP. So I was born in 1989, which means I grew up in the horny ass times of the 90s when the gaming industry was absolutely rancid in regards to just overblow, just massive boobs everywhere, tiny little waists and everything else. And I completely fell for it because I'm living in the 90s. I'm a little horn dog. I'm like five to 10 or whatever age I was. And so for me, it's got to be Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> um, and just a game that completely had both sides of the coin. You had Tifa, massive balloon boobs left, right and center, all up in your face, loving it. And even if you play that game, even in game when she's if, when, if, when winning animation in the combat is just to do a bit of that, just stick him out. I'm loving it. It's great. I'm nine years old. I'm loving it. And, uh, and it's great. And then the other side of that <laughs> is Aerith, which is the sort of way more considered character, the sort of like girl next door, like Cloud's best friend. Um, but I love both of those characters, like absolute genuine love because um, you spend so much time with them and they call you by your name as well, um, which is a good movie. But also, they you know, you can put your name in and they say like, oh, yeah, nice to meet you, Scott. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Nine year old me is loving a bit of company <laughs> yeah, from the nice female form. Yeah. And I'm just sort of like hanging out with like hot, is hot AF Tifa and then hanging out with like little best friend Aerith. But actually, the super hot woman is actually the person that is really your best friend all along. Couldn't get better than that. Couldn't get better. I'm just imagining now, just like, oh, Scott. Come back to bed, Scott. No, it never gets that raunchy. But oh, this oh god, I've got to address something else from the nineties as well. Um, in Final Fantasy VII, the amount of dialogue options that you have to try and be this sort of like you know like little, little like sort of suave Lothario where you can just respond to just be like there's a bit when um, at the very beginning of the game when you first go to Seventh Heaven, which is the name of the bar, um, and the, it cuts to the next morning and Tifa says like, oh, hey, did you sleep well? And you can say next to you, who wouldn't? Which is just, you know, 90s AF. And, uh, but back then, yeah, hit the button. Yeah, loving it. Yeah, I'll tell you I love you, Tifa. Yeah. Who did you take on the date at the carnival? Uh, Aerith was the one that it served up to me because I had her in my party for more. Um, yeah, I want, a, I want a nice healer. Healing wind. I want to prefix my entry by saying, obviously, this is my first crush. In fact, it's my most recent crush, and that is Higgs in Death Stranding. It's Troy Baker, and he's got a little evil mask on, a little mohawk, he's really cool. I really like him. He can turn me into black goo any day, if you know what I mean. Um, but my first good video game crush, when I was about eight years old, I'm narrowing it down a little bit closer than Scott was. About eight years old, nine years old maybe, maybe 10. Okay, maybe I'm not narrowing it down at all. Uh, was Link in the Ocarina of Time. So basically, with Ocarina of Time, you start as a child, Obviously, most people know this, and then you get like transported forward in time, uh, seven years. So he's about like 19-ish, 18-ish when he goes forward in time. And when I first saw that, I was like, "Ooh, I'm feeling weird feelings in my young lady body." And oh, um, oh, oh, <laughs> how would you right, call no, it? No, because that, that's, that's the thing. I would have actually preferred you just saying it got you moist than hearing <laughs> so, that was somehow ridiculously more dirty than hearing that. I'm shocked and appalled at you, Miss Howie. But the thing is, right? I thought I thought that I had it for Link. And then I'm adventuring around and Sheik pops in. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, hello, mysterious masked man, who then turns out to be Zelda. And for some reason, that makes me love her more. <laughs> I am I'm purely heterosexual, but I've got some really burning feelings of love for uh, video game women. So shout out, obviously, to Sheik, to Zelda. Aloy, I just want to cuddle up next to and be best friends with. Aloy, I just love her so, so much. Uh, pretty much every female in Persona 5, and um, just pretty much every female anywhere. Does anything Ashley Birch plays? Yes. Um, the two women in yes. Uncharted Lost Legacy, I could keep going. I could keep going. Just listen. <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> Everyone's all making notes, must play these games. Yeah. Um, but no, yes. Oh, I, I really, really love, um, I l just love anything that, that, that has a strong, very attractive, very amazing women in it these days. Oh, shout out to Fragile, who I really hate that her name is Fragile, but she's amazing and I love her. What was your first video game crush that wasn't a roller coaster? I don't want to shag a roller coaster, Jules, for Are goodness you... sake. <laughs> this is not what you've been telling us. Yeah. Uh, no, I. Signals, Rich. Damn it, because like most of the stuff I played when I was younger was all like non-narrative focused. So the first thing I played that involved like more in-depth characters was Half-Life 2. So for me, my first crush was Alex Vance, the first sort of uh, the third friendly face you see um, in Half-Life 2. You're being beaten up by uh, by Metro Cop soldier people, and they come into a corridor and they beat you up, and then suddenly you hear her jump in, she kicks some ass, and she wakes up and she's sort of in your face like, "Hey man, how, how's it going? I'm gonna be really nice to you and help you along through this journey." And 
Alex is such a fantastic character. She's so um, strong. She's a very independent person, though she's very loyal to her father and her cause. Uh, and the best thing is she's, she was, for, for 2004, she wasn't a character that was overblown, quite literally, in places. Like, she was a very grounded character. And even in that game, there's only one nod to there being like a bit of a, oh, could her and Gordon be a bit, mm, which is just a little elbow nudge from her dad. A Black Mesa reset at the beginning of the game. Otherwise, she's just this fantastic companion who isn't a pain in the ass. And there is that connection she has with Gordon. Um, and because Gordon's very mute, you know, you don't see Gordon, you see yourself in that position. So she's there, like, you know, take care, be good, like, be safe. It's kind of like, I will! I promise I will. So. <laughs> That's, uh, what, that's way too hard. No, 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 no. It's about to take a turn. Yeah. Because uh, Rich told me a story. Before. Yeah. I, hope I will it's out now. So yeah, just like you know, she's not an overblown character. She's not overblown. Let's put it that way. But uh, back in Gary's mod, back when you could download custom models, <laughs> yeah, I did once download a rather more well endowed Alex Vance. As you know, a, a pubescent teenager thinking, yeah, this, this is the this is the kind of thing, and it's like it was mm. five to ten. It was five to ten, yeah, and it's kind of like, nah, you know, this this doesn't this doesn't work for Alex, so it was like, nah, you know, I'm not going to use that. But then the next time I booted up the game, even though I put this in Gary's mod, I booted up the game again, played it again, it gets to the point in that in that alley in the in the corridor, and the you get knocked out, and she she wake up, and she's over, she's in front of you, like, oh hi, she takes a step back, and they were still there. It's like, ah. This isn't the Alex I remember. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, how terrible! Oh, I did. I, I genuinely did take the mod off after that. It wasn't right, but yes, I, d I downloaded a titty mod for Alex. <laughs> it wasn't the right thing to do. I'm glad Didn't. you know your sins. I do know. I repent. So my uh, my first video game crush also comes at the prime age of five to ten years old <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 2002, in Deepest Darkest 2002, when uh, a certain game's release I've spoken about previously and of. Uh, spoken about my, excuse me, no. spoken about my feelings for, uh, which is, um... Fallout. Sly Ray Cooper. Oh! Oh, yeah. No, I, I freaking love Sly Cooper. Like, he is such a suave, but dastardly man. Like, oh, he, I know he's a raccoon. Like, I know he's a raccoon, but that's part of the fun. Like, you know what I mean? He's got no trousers on ever, running around, having a great time, <laughs> swinging around with his cane, doing being all... Him and Carmelita Fox was like... I wanted to be in that relationship with both of them. Like, of like, I love them both so much. Comedy to Fox being like the sassy, like laser shooting. Who? I'm gonna shoot you, Slurik. It was sort of like feeling. Oh, that game was a revelation for me between those pair. But yeah, Sly Raccoon, the raccoon that opened my heart was my first video game crush because he was a wonderful, lovely soul. He was kind, he was like Robin Hood. And we all know that everybody had dirty, horrible feelings for the cartoon Robin Hood movie. Disney one. Yeah, excuse me, Maid Marian and Robin Hood in that film, like both Oodle, of them. Oodle lally, oodle lally. Oodle, Yoddy, what a dick. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, etc., etc. Et Boink. Like that film. <laughs> like... <laughs> On boink. Honestly, uh, yeah. So I think it just elicited the Robin Hood feelings in me. And I was like, oh yeah, it's Lara Coon, baby. Um, but other than that, like it grew. And my um, my obvious furry feelings came through more in less humanoid people, which was Thane Krios in Mass Effect 2. I absolutely, I like had a proper soft spot for Thane. I thought he was so... Oh, I thought he was dreamy. Yeah, his big goggle eyes. I was like, oh, please, Thane, hold me. The world is ending. Take me to your bedchamber. Uh, but yeah, no, that was uh, that was what it upgraded into. And now, <sighs> humans just don't cut it anymore. And just as a disclaimer, no animals were harmed in the making of this video or in the making of me. But some pussies were slain! <laughs> <laughs> ah.